In the living room of the apartment I share with my husband, we have a handsome dark wood case for our stereo system. Two box sets of performances from the Metropolitan Opera with James Levine conducting have occupied a prominent spot on the lower shelf since they were released in 2010 to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Mr. Levin's Met debut. Displaying them was a genuine expression of my admiration for a towering American artist. But on Sunday, Mr. Levine was suspended by the Met after several men accused him of sexually abusing them decades ago, when they were still teenagers. Now, I'm not sure I want to keep those sets so visible in my home. I feel heartache for the men, who say they were taken advantage of by someone they looked up to someone in a position of intimidating authority. But how do Mr. Levin's countless fans, and I as a critic, reconcile his legacy with what he's been accused of? Is his work tainted beyond our ability to appreciate the artistry involved? People have asked me over the years whether I had heard talk about Mr. Levin's private behavior. I had, but just vague rumors. I knew that reporters at The Times and other publications had done some investigating over the years and turned up nothing concrete. Point one time, though, I brought up his personal life with him in an on the record exchange. Reading that 1998 interview today, nearly 20 years later, his comments seem more revealing than they did then. At the time, his appointment as music director of the Munich Philharmonic had recently been announced. Some German tabloids had dropped innuendos about his sexuality. In his office, I asked Mr. Levine how he was handling this and whether he still felt welcomed by the city of Munich. Would he finally address this talk head-on, and open up about his very guarded personal life? I was hoping that he might discuss being gay. I've never been able to speak in public generalities about my private life, he said. Day by day, my world is filled with real music, real people, real interactions, implying that the rumors were simply fake. He refused to reply to all the speculation about his life. How much do you have to give? he asked sounding almost plaintive. How good do you have to be? How good, in other words, before you are given a pass to keep your private life private, as we now know, he should never have gotten such a pass. What do we now do about the work he has left us? I attended Mr. Levin's concert performance of Verdi's Requiem at the Met on Saturday afternoon a few hours before news about the accusations against him broke. He seemed to me a little burdened and looked a little tired. It's entirely possible that Saturday's lackluster performance will end up being Mr. Levin's final appearance with the company. But I have just listened again to one of the recordings from the Levine commemorative box set, a 1980 performance of Berg's Wozzeck the staggering 20th-century masterpiece, with José Van Damme in the title role. Mr. Levine was an inspired conductor of this music, drawing out the eerie beauties of Berg's expressionist score and revealing the profound human truths and compassion that run through this depressing tragedy. I can't imagine not being moved by it always. And yet, immersing myself in Berg's story of an impoverished, delusional soldier forced by superior officers to perform humiliating tasks for menial pay, a man driven to murder and self-destruction by feelings of powerlessness, I couldn't help thinking about Mr. Levin's accusers. So what do I do with these commemorative collections? I won't give them away. But I'm going to move them out of my living room.